Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids and we're back for some more Pyre and we just finished off a right against the fate in which they made a friend or two and we've been trying to work in Volfred into our rights plans a little bit because he is now able to participate and I believe if I remember correctly we may be headed straight to the fall of Solium not long from now but anyways let's uh, catch up with Tay before we get all caught up in that hmm. Tay seems very happy about something and has been chanting softly to herself on closer inspection, however, she seems to be engaged in conversation with the wagon wall. And so, after the rite, he said to me, I think he said to me, Farewell. Can you believe it, little brother? He said that. Then he left. Go find Mr. Dalbert. He went on ahead. And so, I think that maybe we are friends now. Don't you think so, too? We have a lot in common, don't we? Friends are supposed to have a lot in common, right? For instance, um, um, we're, we're both fighting for those we care about, for those who helped us when we needed it. Is that not so? He's very lucky to have met Mr. Dalbert, isn't he? She falls silent for a time. Then, it cannot be that the eight scribes intended that all of us just have to fight each other all the time just cannot be. So many can we face. They don't like us very much, do they? Because if we prevail against them, it must mean that they cannot go home, even if they really want to. So that's why they don't like us. Well, when they told me to, to stop being me, I, I didn't like them either. You want to know what I think, little brother? I think the scribes put us together in all this so we can learn from one another and grow closer together as friends. That is what I think, little brother, and I told them so, and maybe the next time I see Alma and Mr. Dahlberg again, they will be happier to see me. She bounds off, noticing you as she goes. Hi, mister. You sense some burden has been lifted from her. And her knowledge of the rites, however informal it may be, has crystallized into a deeper understanding. Plus one hope for Tay, permanently. Fantastic. So that is, I think, sort of the confirmation that we've been looking for with regard to each of the characters and their various things that they're trying to sort out in the downside. Ruki with Barker, Tamatha with her sister, and I really don't remember if we did ultimately, you know, to what extent did we resolve that, and then, as we just saw, Tay with the Fates. We do have some passages in the Book of Rites, though. Let's see what we have here. Downside travels, in the words of Jonir and Many Maiden, cannot survive the downside, you cannot get around. Howlers shall descend on you. A tempest shall shear you to pieces. That is just the way of it. Traveling through the environs is no simple feat. Consider yourself blessed if you were born a cur. If not, however, you should have to find a means to cross these lands without the benefit of four strong paws. Luce Glorian believes this untamed land can be traversed through means unnatural. I thought at first that he meant sorcery. He suggests invention. He speculates that carriages could cross this land by harnessing its fury. A wild thought. In my case, my paws shall suffice. We may have more? We do. Downside climate. I know of no polite way to describe the climate here. It oppresses every living thing, except perhaps the native flora, a few specific areas. Once more, the recommended course is to keep moving. Moving keeps you warm when it is cold, or when it is very hot, you use what strength you can to move to somewhere you, think you can think and breathe. Weather in the downside seems intrinsic 
the different regions, which my good friend, Molten Malik, shall describe. Shelter can be difficult to find. You cannot stay there for very long. Perhaps, however, shelter can accompany you rather than constrain you. Guessing this is the entry from Malik? Is it? Oh, the fate! Words of Halu, Halu the Swallow. The fate united under many main the Alpha Chief. I was wondering which group they were technically affiliated with. So they're technically a Kerr group. Their leader is a Kerr. He is brash, but follows his traditions. He prizes faith, discipline, and honor. Qualities he seems to lack at first. He formed the fate under the precepts of olden bylaws his four-legged ancestors. They believed in a certain natural order in the way of things. Many men wanted for the fate to likewise show respect. Initially, he only chose from other curves. However, he urged the fate to replenish their numbers from any race or ethnic group thus willing. Yeah, that's partially what made me a little uncertain. Now it is one of the few groups that's mixed. Thus, Shall they anticipate what is to come, open eyes and minds, and never frown upon what is in store for them. And that is it there. I think that looks like everything here, although maybe let's take a quick look at the planner to see how things are faring. Because after that most recent right, we're up to 59%, which is of course the highest we've been thus far, and it looks like Confirm. We are set to go up against the essence. I think we were talking a little bit about last time in what, if I remember correctly, will be the liberation right. Yeah, right still next liberation zero, so this is gonna be it. They're gonna be a tough opponent for sure. But let's carry on. Onward we go. Straight. All of Solian. See if we pass anything along the way, but I'm skeptical. But yes, so the group we're going against, they are the Harps. They can fly. We'll be a group consisting of Pamitha's sister. Obviously, Pamitha has since been freed, so she will not be participating in this, although I suspect that her sister may have something to say about that. As for whether we have a good way to combat their high mobility, it's going to be tough. They aren't necessarily the fastest, but they, of course, can fly, and that is tricky. Here we are. Once more, we sail above the Paul of Sylvia. The template, the eight, er, temple of the eight scribes awaits us at the summit. None have seen the temple, save for those worthy to come to the rites there. And myself, and my counterpart is less. You may then wonder whence it came. The cycle of the rites has turned since the beginning of this age. Over its course, whilst waiting for the cycle's returns, some exiles thus pay tribute to the eight scribes. I think the scribes may not have wanted such extravagance, or the carved effigies to them along the way. Yet it is for triumvirates to decide how best to honor the rites. They choose to honor them, as you see here. How you remember this, of course, whether you even wish to do so, that is yours to decide. The scribes would not want otherwise. All right, I forgot we are technically supposed to land further down here. We can choose either Emperor's Ascent there's a gap through the nameless lower summits beneath Mount Elodial. You sense Tizo shall gain favor from the scribes if you land here. Whereas we could also take Emperor's Fall or as an alternative. Can't take both. Emperor's Fall, a pathway on the outskirts of Mount Elodial's nameless lower summits, where we sense Ruki shall gain favor from the scribes if we land here. So, this is where we need to start to think about who we might want to set free, or at least have the potential to set free, and who, in general, might participate 
in this liberation right so i think rookie is at or near the top of that list certainly he is without panatha our strongest contributor in the rights so i think it is very safe to assume that if he's not going to be liberated or at least have the potential of being liberated in this right at the very least he's going to be participating so i think it makes a lot of sense to choose him here Dizo may or may not be one of those people make landing out to Lodeo, where Wolfram pulls you aside while the others complete the post-flight inspection he puffs at his pipe before speaking up reader as you know I now wear the raiments once again. This means that I, myself, may soon be worthy to regain my freedom in the eyes of the eight scribes. So this is something I was bearing in mind, was when he did start participating again, or at least volunteered to start participating again in the rites, we saw that he has zero reputation or enlightenment, I believe, correct term so he hasn't ranked up at all and that is notable because i believe from my understanding it is technically only the three most enlightened people in your group that will be eligible to become free that's why we've seen in those past liberation rights that sometimes we've wanted to liberate some people or at least thought it might be worth considering only to realize that they weren't eligible so that is notable for Volfred, because for Volfred, he's starting at zero, but he has so much inspiration, which is the stuff that accelerates the rate at which he gains that enlightenment. From my understanding, that basically means that you're going to need to have Volfred participate in most, if not every single rite once he becomes eligible. We did skip the first one with him, because... He plays so differently from the other exiles that I thought we might need a little time to practice with him. But we did start working him in on the second one, and I think we ought to do it to the extent that we can every right thereafter to make sure that he does have enough time to gain that enlightenment. Because if we do that, then he may have the potential to gain enough enlightenment, become eligible to be liberated, and then I assume with him being the leader, the person who is orchestrating much, if not all, of this plan, that he would be the single most impactful person to get on the other side to liberate. So, for that reason, I think that is probably something that we ought to shift our priorities around a little bit to make sure that we can at least give ourselves the chance of making that happen, and that means Wolfred is participating in as many rights as we can make him participate in. And let's see what he has to say about that. Because he had previously said that readers, and he is capable of reading, would not be capable of getting their liberation. Know, however, that it is not my wish to go just yet. It is true I could be of some benefit to our plan back in the Commonwealth, but... I feel my place is here for the time being. So I doubt he would be eligible at this point because, as I was saying, he doesn't have much enlightenment compared to other exiles at the moment. But I think he's just saying he doesn't want to go yet. Yet being the key word. Eventually, it will still be very, very meaningful if we can manage to pull that off. Perhaps once the Nightwings are on sure footing in their path, my time shall come. Those are my feelings on the matter, and I wanted to let you know. I shall, of course, defer to you. Our path is not to contradict the reader's will. Yeah, so I think although he is capable of reading, because we are technically the ones that are doing the reading, and he is the one participating, that he is still capable of being liberated. Anyway, I trust that all of us, yourself included, shall find our freedom. If not soon, 
and by when all of this is over. Okay. Well, there's no one to talk to. Here we go straight into seeking the Nomad Scribe's favor. Olga Lavanian. Having completed the post-flight inspection, you and Ruki visit the monument of Golgo Lathanian here in Emperor's Fall. Okay, you know old Ruki Greentail doesn't like to beg, but, you know, I'm hearing we ain't got a lot of chances left at getting out of here. Well, then, you gotta let me out of here. Come on, who deserves it any more than me, huh? Mom's out there waiting for old Ruki to come home? Soon, he is finished paying his respects, so he has been here, at least in our group, by far the longest, because we've already liberated Jodariel and Hedwin, the two that were the other original members of our group. Obviously, there have been others, like Wolfred, who have been around probably longer than Ruki, it's just they weren't as directly affiliated with us. You return to the wagon in silence, feeling as though gold gold thing, don't you think? You soon shall ascend the mountain, though there is time now to pursue your vocations. Ruki gains plus two hope. That's what affects his duration of banishment, so I think he already has a lot of improvements there. Like, if we take a quick peek, I think we will find he should have crazy high hope. Yeah. He comes back in four seconds, which is very very quick. Granted, he does have a talisman equipped at the moment that is giving him plus two hope, but even then, that is very speedy return from banishment. So that's very useful. So now we have an interesting question because as I was just describing earlier, we now know we don't have much time left. And does that mean that we prioritize things a little differently with our vocations as well. Like, I would argue we almost certainly do not want to try to seek out any of the coin-related soul stuff or potentially talismans. I think we're doing pretty well on that front at this stage. But, could we, for example, try to mentor someone like Olpred and see if that might help? Because go back in here for another second. Look at Volfred. We see, this is what I was referring to before, where he has an astronomical amount of inspiration. It is full. And I think what that basically means is with every right, he will gain a rank. He just needs to participate frequently enough to get those ranks. So, yellow part is the part that he's achieved thus far. Green is the inspiration. So if you compare the yellow... He's a little behind Bertrude, not much, but I mean, compare him to Ruki, who's been here for forever, and he's almost at the maximum. Tay, similar. Tizo, not quite as far. Sir Gilman, not quite as far, but he's fighting an uphill battle, trying to catch up with those people. So it would be tough for him to... Sur Basically, it would mean he'd need to surpass Tizo and surpass Sir Gilman, I think. Bertrude, I don't think that would be as difficult, given how they're roughly equivalent at the moment. So, yeah, and I think that may be an indication that we ought to have Ruki and Tay participate, and they will just continue to be our leaders in terms of enlightenment. We're gonna let Sir Gilman and Tizo continue to sit on the sidelines and try to have Volfred fit in as that last person. He's still a little bit of a sandbag there where he's uh, not doing a lot to help us at the moment because he is so painfully slow. My hope is if we can manage to get him to rank up a little bit more, he's not going to gain quickness per se, but he might gain enough other skills he can be somewhat useful to us, even with his short limits. So I think, I think we do this because I don't know if we're going to be able to get enough, enough enlightenment from specifically trying to mentor 
mentor Volfred to actually get him to rank up. I think he's already going to rank up once per go, once per right, the amount of inspiration he has. So I think we take this route. Despite your growing knowledge of the Book of Rites, you yet struggle to grasp certain aspects of its teachings. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. It's been a little while since we've done this. Now, we have done all of our quickness upgrades. We've done one hope upgrade, but I think that is probably the next best thing for us. Presence does make the auras bigger. But that's not really my style. I feel like this plays more into the big, slow character's play style, whereas quickness plays more into the small, quick character's play style. Hope is a little bit of a middle ground. So I think quickness, rightfully so, we prioritize that first, but then hope, I think, ought to come next. To extract a deeper meaning from the words and teachings of the Book of Rites, one you feel in your core yet struggle to articulate. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, cannot tell. Gain the reader's influence, spirit. All Nightwings gain plus two hope. I mean, we already had one, so that's one additional hope. We were just talking about how Ruki has a lot of hope. Well, just gain one more. Actually, I'm kind of curious. I know we keep on going back here, but... 3.8 seconds. A little bit of a difference. Let us carry on. Two options. A high road. First of two paths leading to the mountain summit, you sense fir tree, she'll gain favor from the scribes along this route, or alternatively, temple cistern. Second of two paths, you sense bullfrey, she'll gain favor from the scribes along this route. I think we have to take this one, because like I was saying, we're going to try to work bullfrey into our plans. It's going to be tricky. See, it's very, very different from the exiles that I usually prefer to use. But if we can get anything to help him along, then that could potentially be a huge boost. En route to the mountaintop, past a monument to Underking Orbs, and Bullfred happens to take notice. Orlek, is this somehow your doing? You, who cursed the scribes and the stars themselves. I pray for you this time, and if the scribes will for the rites to be ended, we shall have to work with that. No setback shall be insurmountable. Soon, he is finished paying his respects. As you prepare to continue your ascent, you sense that Under King Ors has shown him favor. Plus three glory. It's the damage he deals to the pyre. I mean, obviously it's a good thing, but it is really hard to score with him. Really hard to get to the opposing pyre. So I'm not sure if this is really going to make much, if any, difference at all. But if we can score with him, great. Is that little bit of a boost. Onward we go. To the top. You and your fellow exiles gather at the foot of Scribe's Gate, or an archway carved of stone where stands the Gate Guardian. Greetings to you, Celeste. I see the exiles of the Nightwings have returned, even as the cycle of the rites begins drawing to a close. The Nightwings accept this as the will of the scribes. <laughs> the Gate Guardian laughs at this softly, for some reason. And you, Tari? Do you accept their will as well? Yeah. But the lone minstrel does not answer her. It's no matter. Now, Nightwings. Each of you, come forth and state what it is that you seek whilst crossing Scribe's Gate. One by one, the Nightwings declare themselves, and all pass through, as before, including Volfred. When Volfred takes his turn, Celeste stops him. Bye. You. I see you wear the raiments once again. Explain. The cycle of the rites is ending. Well, I do not know exactly why. I have my theories. One of my contemporaries, he who fell from the summit long ago, he lives and seeks his liberty 
again. He stands against us now and believes his triumvirate to be the true Nightwing. Let's maybe not bring that up to them right as we're about to go through the door and participate in the liberation right, because we kind of want to make sure we still get to do that. I remember well the contemporary whom you meet. Then the Nightwings stand divided. It's true, and this is why I didn't really want to bring this up, Fulfred, because the Nightwings are supposed to automatically gain access to the Liberation Rite, but if there's some question as to who the real Nightwings are, then we don't want them to turn around and reject us. Yes, and so I wear the raiments once again, in case that it may help to right this wrong. For I am Volfred Sandalwood, and I seek liberty for each of us, so that one day we all might stand shoulder to shoulder on the other side, and bring our freedom to the people there. She considers Volfred's words for a moment. I see. Then, move along. The Guardian of Scribesgate regards you all. Then, she beckons you onward. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome. Go forth with glory. Celeste? What is it, Tari? The will of the scribes. Long have we both followed it, I think, would agree. In equal measure, it has drawn us close, as separated. But if their aim now is to keep us apart for another age or longer, then no, I do not accept their will. You, blasphemy, Tariq, and at the gate, no less. The lone minstrel simply puts his hat back on. Then, he describes themselves, admonish me. Until tomorrow night, Celeste. Minstrel? Ooh, the rebel. So, I mean, in many ways, we were trying to fly under the radar with our plan. Doing things like hiding Bullfred and trying to make it so that people didn't realize that we were trying to mount a, a revolution, really. Except now that Volfred is participating and has admitted that it's him, and it's kind of hard to hide that now, especially if he's going and participating in the Liberation right of all things. If we're trying to nominate him for Liberation, and even if he does get liberated there, then I would think cat's out of the bag at that point, right? So... I don't know, that does give me a little bit of hesitation, but we'll see. Having reached the peak of Mount Elodial again, you see the vastness of the downside all around you. It leads you deep in thought regarding which of your companions ought to go free this night, as Pamatha did the last time. Yes, so, about that. As I was saying, I think what it will, well, okay. Let's talk to whoever wants to talk to us first, Fulfred, and then we will discuss our final plans for what we're thinking of doing for this. Fulfred looks up as you approach and smiles. I never thought that I would say such things, my boy, but it is good to wear the raiments in the rites once more. The march of time does have a way of healing certain hurts. Besides, the Nightwings of today, we are a very different beast than the Triumvirate which took me in almost a decade ago. Ours was a Triumvirate of exactly three. Well, four with Tizo proved to be an exception. Though historically, the Nightwings never took on more exiles than needed. But I thought we were supposed to fill each of the masks. One for each of the scribes. I have mentioned my predecessors, Brighton, and my former companions, Arisa and Orle. Perhaps naively, I had hoped my time with them would not be relevant directly to what we now attempt. But seeing our stories are now intertwined, do let me know 
There is more if you wish to learn of them. Bullfred invites you to inquire about the former Night Waves. The name of the Triumvirate in blue. Since your fellow exiles have assumed their identity, okay, I was hoping we might get a little more explanation about the previous Night Waves there, but I suppose that's what we ought to ask here. And, I mean, first and foremost, I have to ask about Orlek, the demon whom you met. What was he like? He and Bullfred close? I mean, let's see what the preview is for the other ones, too. But for Arisa, she betrayed Orlek. She was supposedly the one who pushed him down the mountain and tried to steal his spot to gain liberation, causing the Nightwings to fall apart. Why would she do such a thing? Or Brighton? Thus far, you have heard only passing reference to Bullfred's predecessor on the Nightwing. All right, well, let's lead with Orlek. Hopefully, we'll have the chance to ask about all of these people. You ask about what Orlek was like when he and Bullfred first became acquainted. Bullfred remained silent for some time. I was very, very sick, you know, when I first landed in the downside. The long trip down the river must have been a little much for me. It was Orlek who found me. He could not have known of my capacity to read before he received me. He was a physician, intolerant of the sight of suffering of any kind. Not just any physician, mind you, a gifted, highly decorated one. He served on the front. Back then, skirmishes erupted frequently, and those such as Orlek they had to deal with many casualties on either side. In time, he said he grew repulsed by what he saw. This sowed in his heart a yearning for an end to all the bloodshed. So, he tried to use his status to negotiate a treaty with the Highway Remnants. Must have gone about how you'd expect. He was given direct orders to return to the front, but when he refused to soil his hands again, cast him into the side. Here, he gained the notice of the Nightwing, and before long, he grew to be one of the finest rights conductors anyone had ever seen. He was instrumental in the liberation of his companions, whose roles in the Triumvirate were later filled by Arisa and me. That's interesting because... He helped other people earn their freedom. That means that he was a member of the Nightwings for some time and was a key contributor, but did not he himself earn his freedom until, you know, what happened. So other people were ahead of him in line, in a way. In time, Orlek's own opportunity for freedom had come up. He longed for it, so that with his exalted status, he might stand a better chance of negotiating peace. However, on the evening of his liberation, well, you know the story from that point. Bullfred breathes a heavy sigh. He and I were kindred spirits for a while. I could not bear to think that he was gone. And now, I still cannot entirely believe it's bad. He is our adversary now. Transform. Grow old. Still, part of me is happy that he lives. Make no mistake, of course. I shall not be swayed against our plan. Not by Orlek or anyone. As I have said before, we share a higher calling now. As for Orlek, he wants his freedom still, although I wonder if he still remembers why. Anyway, there was something else, my boy. Okay, so... Oh, I had a thought there. Oh, yes. So, we've seen Orlek and his old Nightwings, true Nightwings, whatever name he wants to call that group once before, and we just saw Volfred refer to them as our adversaries. 
So I still strongly suspect, especially since that he's alluded to potentially Orlek being the reason, the person who somehow made the stars fade and liberation cycles slow down and eventually come to a stop. I still think we're probably going to see him one more time, and my guess is it's probably going to be for the final Liberation Rite. So I don't think it's going to be this one, but possibly the next. Alright, let's ask about Arisa, who's the person who pushed Orlek down the mountain. You ask about Arisa, who you understand betrayed Orlek at the moment of his liberation, but then perished in Shimmerpool. I'm afraid you know the brunt of it, my boy, but I suppose you ought to know something on Arisa's past, lest you be quick to judge her solely by her actions. Mind you, I would never make excuses for the terrible choice she ultimately made, but her life, I understand, was very difficult. Arisa had been exiled for the foulest of acts. You could see it plainly branded on her face. Such was the heinousness of what she did in the eyes of the Commonwealth. She was an apprentice blacksmith in her youth, taking up the post left by her brother. He had fallen in battle on the blood board, despite wielding her father's own lance and armor. Her father never quite recovered after this, and had grown cruel and detached was Arisa who took the brunt of his fury. He expected the impossible of her. One day, it was all too much for her. So, she, so when the next he lashed out at her, she, well, she struck back. She struck back again, and again, and again. When they came for her, her father was gone, and she was not herself. She was promptly cast into the downside of the crime, where her hatred for the Commonwealth only grew. Arisa always was intense in her demeanor, haunted by her father's memory. More than that, her chief motive for wanting back her freedom was, in hindsight, not a healthy one. She longed to join our nation's enemies build for the High Wing Remnants a great siege engine that could shatter the defenses of the Commonwealth and forever end our feud. What she ultimately did to Orlek was an act of pure, thoughtless desperation. I do not think it was simply evil, nor do I think that it was personal. What is a praxis? I often wondered, though, if in her final moments in the Shimmer Pool, she understood what she had done and the depths to which she had fallen. For years, I must admit, I hated her, but now, my only hope is that she found peace untenable during her relatively short life in the Downside and the Commonwealth. Furthermore, I hope the life of Arisa offers some perspective yet to those of us who have not made the same mistakes. Now then, was there something else? Brighton, one that we haven't heard much about? You inquire about Brighton, who you understand was liberated prior to when Bullfred first joined the Nightwings. I had never met Brighton in person, but I know him rather well by now. So, for that matter, my boy. Is he the minstrel? So do you. I think he's the minstrel. He studies your reaction for a moment. Then, Brighton was born wealthy, but not special otherwise. You would have reason to have heard of him. He was exiled for negligent misconduct. I do not know exactly why and do not care for spreading rumors. I first heard of him through Risa and Orlek found me in me a suitable replacement following his liberation. They spoke little of him, 
Orlek gave the impression they did not see eye to eye, but he assured me I soon would hear from him myself. Indeed, as I became accustomed to the book which you know but well by now, I soon began to hear the voice. Or is it a voice? Ofred looks at you, as if to see if you yet take his meaning. You see, my boy, after Brighton's liberation, he assumed a new identity within the Commonwealth, and a new responsibility to triumvirate liberation. That voice you hear from time to time, whensoever the stars align, it's his. He's the voice, okay? He is no longer Brighton. He is now none other than the Arch Justice and Trobeles, the Knight himself. Probably should have hovered over that. I don't remember that name. Liberated exiles retain certain burdens to their own triumvirate. They have much to thank them for. Not just their freedom, but their exalted status in the Commonwealth. The theocratic rulers of the Commonwealth. They do not wear masks and raiment simply for the sake of ceremony. They are not who they appear to be. Hmm? The rulers of the Commonwealth are not who they appear to be. Their public pasts are nothing but a fabrication. Like Brighton, they once were exiles too. Oh, okay, that is big. So Volfred, in his plan to overthrow the Commonwealth government, is basically saying that people who once were exiles just like him, just like us, have strayed, have done something to wrong the people, and that is... That is cruel, I guess you could say, in that... Those people who should understand better than anyone what that's like to live on the other side have now perpetuated that cycle of sending people to the downside for their crimes and having them just disappear. Okay, that is... yeah, there's a lot to that. Frightened. That voice. He has no love. For either one of us by now. He knows full well what we attempt to do. Yet, he is bound by the tradition of rights. Yeah, because he has the voice, and Brighton, by extension, has started to identify that we are up to something and has called us out for housing a traitor, at least in his eyes. That's how he's characterized it. He shall always stand on ceremony. Plain. But I think he knows deep down that he is powerless. Hmm. How ironic that one of such high status in the Commonwealth should be so frightened of some long forgotten exiles such as we. Anyway, that's frightening for you. He must have seen in you the potential to be one of his staunch supporters for a time. If that's a path you wanted to pursue, I should apologize. Now then, whom else should we talk about? I believe that's everyone. Is. Let's not trench on any more about his old memories. You bid Volfred a good afternoon and leave him his memories. My pleasure. Reflecting on the past from time to time helps demonstrate how far we've come. Yet, how much farther we have yet to go. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that we just uncovered there. Wolfred's certainly been holding on to some secrets. Alright, but we still have that liberation right. Gotta see if we can bring some people over to the Commonwealth and set them free. Which means, of course, we have to go to the slug market first. Hey, little visit to Falcon Rock. Um, hey guys, so, uh, like, I, I 
don't know what's uh, going on up there with all them stars acting all real weird and stuff, but let me tell you something here. You ain't gonna find a better deal on all this stuff from anybody. I mean anybody in the downside. Trust me when I tell you that, okay? So uh, go ahead, stock up. Okay, so we did buy things from you recently. We actually have a surprising amount of coins though. We thought we'd be a little, a little more coin starved. I did manage to get another one of these from the uh, the plants in our uh, in our cart. So I mean, it's four coins, but yeah, that's gonna make a huge difference. I mean, it is the difference between being able to afford this and not being able to afford that. So, uh, we, I've been saying this for a while, but we're probably gonna end up using these, maybe even today. Uh, um, otherwise, are there any other talismans that we see here that look really appealing? Because so I think, generally speaking, I really like the ones we have at this stage, and that's why, I think, for the most part, I'm comfortable with sticking with the ones we have and just looking to upgrade them. We have 60, so could take some of the cursed ones, but I don't know. <laughs> Not a, well, you know what? I wonder. I mean, I was reading this and I was thinking that is such a huge downside to not be able to cast. But what if you use it on one of the characters that has a pretty unusual cast that you tend not to use anyway? Say, maybe, uh, Sir Gilman, for example, potentially? Um, potentially Tizo, but that's maybe a bit more of a stretch. Because... And having your aura around you, like Tiso with his aura around him when he has the orb, would be useful. I don't know, that still seems like it's awfully risky. Maybe worth giving it a shot in a practice ride or something like that to test it out, but I don't think it's something we'd want to run straight into. Adversaries banished take longer to return. We do still have this one that we've yet to buy. It's quite expensive and I don't think we have the means to sell things to make up that value, unless we sell legendary talismans, but don't no, want to do that. One away from this, the Dowsing, the Adversary's Pyre, the Bear's Pyre is restored up to five. This is really good. Although, the one that we just picked up is just an objectively better version than this, isn't it? Almost. One we picked up from a, ta a guaranteed talisman encounter had it so that we gain life on our pyre for 50% of the damage that we deal. So that one that we got would be better for higher damage dealing characters, whereas this one, for characters that don't deal a lot of damage, this might actually be better. Because, I mean, we'd have to upgrade it a little bit, because there's no one that deals just five dam or 10 damage when they uh, do score. The lowest is 15, but if we upgrade this and we can get it to 10 damage per, or 10 healing per score, then that would be better for some characters like Ruki, Sir Gilman, but it requires that we get exactly one more point. And how best to do that? We don't really use this anymore. It is decent. I mean, otherwise we could sell one of these tiny little stardusts, but I think we paid a lot more to get them than just one coin. So I'm a little hesitant to do that. I think we give this a shot. And we take this. And I think that's gonna be it then, because I doubt we can afford anything for nine. So let's go. That's how you get a repeat customer there, Dad. You give them a deal. Okay. Nice. So, I think if we were to upgrade that one, we could consider using it. In fact, I'm actually not sure if we need to upgrade um, in here or if we are allowed to do it actually just before or right. So want to be mindful of that, and if we have ones that we want to upgrade, 
then maybe now is the best chance to do that. So this is the one I was referring to that we just picked up. That is very unpleasant sound. Um, they're very similar. This is for 50% of the damage dealt, whereas this is for five. So if we can level this up, I assume we should be able to, then I think on some occasions, for some characters, this might be better. Like, Tay, for example, deals 20, so this gives 10 life whenever she scores, whereas this still gives 5. If we can upgrade this to the point where it gives 10, then it's roughly, or it is equal. Whereas if you take someone else who causes 15 damage when they score, then under those circumstances, you might be able to upgrade this such that it's better than this. So let me just see, though, if there are other talismans that we would very much like to upgrade. I think these ones you can't upgrade. I love them, so I wish we could. This one is used to be one of our favorites, but is kind of just a worse version of these. I'm probably not going to prioritize that. And then there are some legendary talismans that are not level 20. Like Triesta's Bloom for uh, Pamitha was amazing. Amatha is now free, so it's not super relevant. For Gilman's unique talisman allows him to jump further, but I'm not a huge fan of that. That's just rank 10, so we could upgrade that. Edwin's no longer terribly relevant. Rupees is just rank 5, but I also tend not to use this one that much. Of the unique talismans that we still have for characters, uh, Tizos might be the only one that we're actively using terribly often. So I think, for that reason, let's prioritize upgrading this guy. Maybe even that. We don't really need that. So yeah, let's go this one, and then maybe Rupees. Assuming you can use multiple Stardust on one Talisman, and then it doesn't lock you out, prevent you from doing any more after you use the first. See how drag a talisman to reject that or like this. good. So still plus five. That's not so surprising. Six, good. Six, seven, seven. What level are you right now? Fifteen. So we want. Either two twos and a one, or two and a three. Either way, really. Probably two and a three to give us a little more flexibility in the future. Plus eight, and yeah, three more. Move it up to plus ten. So yeah, now this is exactly what I was hoping for. So this means that for Rookie, this is actually better than this. Might still prefer using these ones for Rookie, but it gives us some options. So I like that. Alternatively, Haze is already rank 20. Rupees might be the next one that we would consider upgrading, but I think we can hold off for now and stick with this. We don't have a ton anymore. What, 2, 4, 5, 7, 11... 13? Okay, that is still a lot. But I think that was the primary thing that it looked like we still use and still might want to upgrade. Also, potentially Tizo. Don't anticipate that we're going to use him on this right. So let's commence. Once more, you have gained the fall of Solia, but one among you may go free. First, you shall have to prevail against the Essence in the Liberation Rite. Leader, your companions are gathered there, under the fall. They shall be counting on you. Indeed, the cycle of the rites turns ever faster, so do is our plan set in. 59, is it 58 or 59 before? My agents in the Commonwealth are beginning to cause a bit of a stir out there, and word has reached high places that the rites are ending. This is our chance, so let us not despair. Your victory will lead us here. 
We shall make the most of whatever the scribes shall have in store for us. That is to say, good luck, my boy. It's time. Right. Let's do it. Liberation right number four. We do have a new Titan Star available to us. Dolness the Locket. Your adversary's pyre shall recover up to five life each time they douse your pyre. I mean, I think we really are not in much of a place to be putting on Titan Stars at this stage. Not in Liberation Rites, not when we keep losing some of our strongest contributors. I think we may be looking at going starless for the remainder of our time here in these rites. We'll see. Certainly not now, though. Certainly not time to add additional challenge. Through a wondrous miracle, the air lies upon this highest mountain and rebooted fall. Once more, the night wings gain the summit of the sacred Mount Alariel to conduct the liberation rite. Even as the stars themselves abandon you. Make good upon these final opportunities, Rita. This glorious age-old tradition coming to an end upon your watch. Sorry? Don't trust your adversaries. The essence shall not throw away this chance. Choose now who may go free, should they unfortunately fail. Saying <laughs> you're rooting for the essence there. Thanks. The pyres burn, and each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. I concur. The pyres burn, and each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. Then, anointed, one of the essence, come forth now and declare yourself. Pay any respects you have unto your adversaries, the Nightwings. Tamatha swoops down from somewhere and unfastens her mask. I am known as Tamatha Thane. I mean to return to my ancestral home and promptly resume my responsibilities as flight tactician for the Highwing Remnants. Our long stalemate against the Commonwealth shall soon be ended. Good I and several of my sisters manage to rejoin our clan. Then our vengeance shall be swift and thorough. Your quarrel with the country that cast you into exile is beneath the notice of the scribes, Tamatha Thane. Here you shall be judged under the stars. My quarrel with the Commonwealth is all that gave me and my sisters strength enough to reach this point. The scribes ought well take heed of how my people suffer. We are not weaklings anymore like your Trieste team. We shall not fall in line with flightless fools and their naked attempts to subsume our heritage, our culture. Speak not again, thus of the saint, or you shall be expelled, Hamitha Thane. Hamitha scoffs, then turns her attention toward your side. And Nightwings, as for you, the fury shall imminently show us nothing is in comparison to the hatred growing from your commonwealth in the mountains on the other side. She signals to her sisters to ready themselves. You seek your freedom? There shall be nothing save for devastation should you manage to turn. All right. Nightwings, your decision. On whose behalf shall your conduct Shall you conduct the liberation rites? Reader, I would ask you to choose wisely, but I'm sure you know no other way. And you, prepare your song, Tariq. Of course, Celeste. Alright, so, uh, let's see who's eligible. My guess is Ruki, Pei, and looks like maybe Gilman? Unworthy, Sir Gilman. Yeah, so... Uh, let's look at... Let's stall a little bit here. Look at the essence first. 
And not so surprisingly, I would expect Tamitha to be our primary threat here. She's fully enlightened. She's not that quick. She has only 12 quickness. However, I suspect she has an ability here that, uh, right here. While flying, Tamitha moves faster than usual, so that 12 is a little misleading. For five seconds after banishing an adversary, Tamitha moves 30% faster than usual, even more so. She banishes someone, then she gets the orb and starts flying away, and she is very quick under those circumstances. If Tamitha is banished while Winged Fury's effect is active, she returns twice as quickly as usual. Hmm. So she gets banished within five seconds of banishing one of her adversaries. She comes back quickly. Tamitha permanently gains plus four to quickness, presence, and hope, making her better all round. Okay, so she was originally slower than that. And her talisman is at the start of the right, the bear's pyre automatically gains 25. Wow. Okay. Good, just making sure she's the only one who has that. Otherwise, we are working at a serious disadvantage. Okay. What do her friends have? While carrying the orb, the bear moves faster than usual, plus 10%. That is dangerous. They likewise don't have humongous quickness, but my guess is they also have the same, yep, quickness while flying. Looks like exactly the same skills. Yeah. At least for her, and for her. Same talisman? Okay. So... They all deal 20 damage. They are well-rounded, I would say, in that they are mobile. They aren't quick to begin with, but as we were just describing, under certain circumstances, like when they are trying to make their push to score against you, they can be very fast and hard to catch because they can fly too. So, I think that does mean that speed is going to be important which is good for us, because that is certainly our playstyle. So Ruki is going to be key. Tay may be key. Gilman may be key. Finding a way to work in Volfred will be tough. He's not worthy. He's not going to be the one that we try to liberate here. And who ought that be? I don't think it should be Tay. I think as far along as she's come, I think that if we're trying to look at things from a practical perspective in terms of who has the most potential to increase the probability of our plan succeeding, I just don't see her having enough influence once she gets to the other side to be a huge asset to us in the Commonwealth. Ruki, maybe a little less so, but I think you might be able to even make that same argument in that, I mean, he's a traitor. I mean that with a a D, not a T. But, uh, aside from that, I mean, I know he's poured his heart out to us about his mother and their struggles, but I think if you look at Sir Gilman, by comparison, he has the potential to be able to bridge that gap between the Worms and the Commonwealth, or at least our resistance movement, and that could be a humongous asset in a way that the other two don't really seem to have that ability. So I think we take him. I think we nominate him. And he certainly is speedy, so that helps. I think we give him probably... Do we try to make him speedier by using some of these, or do we try to give ourselves the ability to heal some of our pyre? Hmm... I feel like one of our primary scorers, because I think Ruki is probably still going to be participating, one of them should probably have this to help us come from behind in case we do fall back a bit. But, ah, uh, find it hard passing this up. So let's go. Gilman it is. This knight at last regained his honor. Let us now find out. Again, I, I do feel bad with not liberating Ruki, him being one of the original members of our group, but I think he is key to our future success 
if we are to liberate Gilman, we're gonna need him to help us succeed. Because otherwise, I mean, if we get rid of him, we are running very, very thin. So here, yeah, I think we still go this route. I'm familiar with it. This does seem really powerful. It does. So I'm tempted. Tempted to find a way to work it in. It would mean we'd have to put this on someone else. The third person who, if we're willing to take that risk, would be Volfred. I just don't see a huge benefit to it. Well, maybe. Maybe we can make it work. So, I think it's a risk, but let's go for it. Gives us the ability to get some life back on our pyre. Let's go for it. No problem, chum. Kim's as good a home as any. Wait, what? I totally misread that. <laughs> uh, then... Uh, uh, it makes me really uncomfortable because he is not going to be a very strong contributor, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Let us prevail on this night for you, Sir Gildan, and for the good of our ailing nation. All right, here goes nothing. One final obstacle to overcome. Here I can soar again above your commonwealth. Such destruction I shall rain upon it soon. But first, let us dance this final time. Right, here goes nothing. Okay, good start. Remember, they have an advantage to start. Pass. Woo! Run away, run away! Made it. Whew. That was a close one. Ooh, I ran straight into that. Okay, I do not like Volford being our only option here. Pass. Ooh, just barely made that one in. That was close. Wasn't sure if we we're gonna have the angle. Hark now, my sisters. Damn what the book says. Advance to strike formation. Prevail here against these wretches, no matter the cost. In disregard for the ways of the rights, Tamitha Thane has ordered her triumvirate to push further afield, adopting an even more aggressive stance for the remainder of this right. Okay. We were, uh, we were able to score quickly, but they're gonna be even more aggressive. Uh, what? Excuse me? What? Oh, that was bad. Uh, got the first one there, but the second one was able to just speed on through. What? Excuse me, you get to start there indefinitely? What? Okay, we got a dash. Ooh. Okay, I did not realize they were going to get to start that close from the beginning. Oh, I missed. This is tough. This is tough. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this. Ugh. It counters our strategy. And I just totally whiffed there. No! It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Jump! No! Oh, we have rekindled from Bullfred, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good. No, nope, it, that's it. That's it. Oh, man. Wow. We botched that so badly. That threw me for such a loop. Our strategy, it revolves so much around zooming to get the orb first. Shit, for them to start right next to it just completely threw a curveball at me that I did not expect. And I should have been able 
to block them on their quick advances there, did manage to remove some of their attempts there with their first person going for it, but then they brought another person in and quickly scored, and I couldn't stop them. Wow. I was not ready. I was not ready. There is no room left for doubt that this knight's honor yet lies scattered all about these lands. We shall just have to go and search around for it some more. And that is harsh. With our time running out, that is a tough, tough loss, Commonwealth fools. How fitting that our that traditions such as this should spring forth from a culture such as yours. They ought to have put me to the sword, but no. They, in their arrogance and in their smug superiority, deign to reason that those such as I ought to be exiled instead. Here then, we would live in penance and learn the air of our ways. She laughs for once, though not with joy. Such utter nonsense. And now they shall receive me open on a champion forged by their precious system. Yet I shall use every waking breath to bring them all to ruin. She turns to her fellow sisters of the essence and regards them respectfully. Sisters, we may not be bound by blood, but ours is stronger is a stronger bond even than that. May we soar together in the stars someday, and I swear to you, Eyewing remnants shall survive. Farewell, sisters. A moment later, she is gone engulfed within the waters of the Shimmer Pool. Yet, you hear her voice reverberate for one last time. Farewell, sisters! Tamitha earned back her freedom. Accept this, or it is done. Tamitha and her sister. Their grace, may the cycle of the rites keep turning for as long as possible. And it's a major, major setback. I don't know how it affects our plan, but it was not good. And you can start to question, was it worthwhile trying to throw in Bullfred there? He doesn't have a normal cast. He lays his sapling instead, and that might have made it a little tricky Until the rights to counter to those quick attacks. The maneuverability, they just flew on over us, and as I said, I was able to stop the first one on a few occasions there, but then they countered quickly, brought in a second person, and we couldn't handle it. Back at the Black Wagon, after the outcome of the liberation right against the essence. Can't win them all, right? Rest well, everyone. Our day shall come in time. Although you did not succeed in liberating Sir Gilman, there is some con consolation. The right shall continue, and before long, we shall have another chance. It's still a miss. Huge missed opportunity, though. Not getting that one back. We have but a few such liberation rights remaining. Exactly how many, I do not wish to speculate about, as yet, until such time as we can better say for certain. Yeah, but I mean, that's one fewer person who we definitely will not be able to liberate. Under no circumstances would I suggest this is ideal. However, it is opportunity enough that our plan may, as yet, succeed. Yes, yeah, so our plan was 59% before that. I suspect it's probably gone down. Went up to 60. I mean, 
that something, our greatest, the thing that we can do to increase the probability the most is succeeding in the liberation rite. So that still set us back a ways, even though I know we went from 59 to 60 in the past, we went up by I think roughly eight-ish percent with successful liberation rites, so we missed out on a lot there. Although, all of these setbacks, I fear. Bullfred trails off, all silent. I mean, we've only we've only messed up one liberation right, so don't get me wrong here. We're still, I would think, in fairly good shape. So to say setbacks plural, I feel, is a little harsh. Some of the others exchange looks. They are beginning to understand. With the rights ending soon, everything which Wilfred has sought, both on his own for many years, and now with all of you, all of it, and in vain, hush spreads to the others. Not to you. You then proceed to do something that none of them seem to expect. You raise your voice. Each of your fellow exiles turns to you, their expressions, asking you a question, no easy answer. What are we going to do? As you meet Gertrude's gaze, the words for the occasion begin to crystallize in her mind. You are searching to find the right words, as all your fellow exiles are looking to now. Search for the words to say. Let's do it. Tell them you oh. Did I just pick an option without realizing that I picked an option? You tell them that you have all stood together time after time throughout this quest and are now poised to seize upon glorious opportunity. Your path to freedom still is laid before you all. True freedom is not waiting for you in the Commonwealth. Meanwhile, the stars themselves are shining on for you. All of what transpired cannot be mere chance. You all now have a divine duty to uphold. You all stand poised to ensure the world you leave behind for your loved ones. For each other, it's a world worth living in. You can believe any of this, and believe, above all, in each other. Believe that the plan may yet be achieved. After a brief period of reflection, share one last sentiment with it. Let us stand together. Now and always. Oh, interact to choose a different way to put this. No, I'm fine with that. <laughs> then you join the others in silence. Thus, you remain together with your thoughts. No one speaks for a time. Then, Susie of a chance we've got here, isn't it, Chum? Just like you're saying there. I guess we gotta go for it. Stare in this ancient world, we. And yet, thy words are tinged with certain truth. Tria! Tizo vows to stand with you, no matter where your quest shall lead. May long the stars remain a light for you, reader sir. All the while, Wolfred remains watching you intently. Then, his expression softens and smiles. You are right, of course, my boy. We are the Nightwings. It is precisely as you said. Let us stand together, now and always. Lead us then, reader. The end of our quest and the dawn of the new age for all our kin. Everyone! For the night wings. Everyone responds in kind. They stand with you, no matter what. They await the outcome of your vision of the stars, but burn with renewed fury. It's now the last rites beckon. Okay. The last round, it would seem. Each of the night wing games plus one hope permanently. Let us stand together. Stars above now burn with what appears a desperate fury. Any more of them, usually. The path is yours to choose amid a myriad of stars. 
Hey, sounds like we'll have more options than usual. The stars of the eight scribes, they shine together, now, as one. The lone minstrel draws breath, as though surprised by what he sees. He backs away and averts his eyes. This is another sign the rites are soon to cease. Few chances yet remain to confront the adversaries you have met during your journey. Okay, we check Volfred's planner. Liberation rites remaining? Don't know. Rights till next liberation? Just two. And at least as things currently stand, would be either chastity or the fate that we would be most likely to face next in the liberation right. So let's see. We can go up against the fate again. We did that most recently, and I think that's the group that has the most direct ties to Tay. I'm not 100% sure if we concluded all of those things or not. The Tempers? I don't think so. We don't have much history with them. Uh, I mean... Probably should avoid Manly, based on how he seems to have the most knowledge of our plan and potentially the most ability to sabotage it. Uh, and Barker and the, dis the Dissidents? I think we've already settled everything with them and rather not go up against them again at this stage if we don't have to. Ah, uh, the withdrawn. I would assume Gertrude is the one that would have the most to say with them. And we haven't really seen if that is, in fact, something that there is to pursue. So maybe, but I'm not sure. Here, uh, I think we have resolved everything between Sir Gilman and Sir Deluge. I don't think that's terribly relevant anymore. Is that it? I think that is it. Yeah, in which case, I think the most convincing one for me is to go up against the Withdrawn and try to use Gertrude. The Withdrawn and the Witch Udmildi have designs upon the rites that have nothing to do with being free again. What they seek, no one in good conscience could abide. He then reveals what he has learned of her and her design. Witch Udmildi, one of the Bog Dwellers and head of the Withdrawn, triumvirate more interested in the legends of the Aslash, the Astral Horde, than in the rites. Her kind was known to be reclusive in the Commonwealth, yet she was brazen in her disdain for common values. She practiced the unspeakable. Somehow, one day, her research into flammable regions grew into an obsession with the slush. Despite widely held belief that he is dead or never did exist, but Udmildi held that Yaslach is nearly dormant and shall someday be reborn with newfound hunger only be stated, sated by devouring the world. Then, at last, could Yaslash return to his glorious home, and Mildi go with him. When Commonwealth officials showed up to take Mildi in for spreading unrest, she was all too eager to comply. After all, a sentence to the downside meant being that much closer to Yaslash's resting place, where she believed she had much work to do where the Withdrawn stood ready to assist. She speaks in seeming riddles, yet the threat of her intentions I think cannot be dismissed. Let us be on our guard, and therefore let us rest now while we can. You bid Volfred a restful night in time. It is too late to take flight, but you expect to press onward to come daily. Okay, wow. So with that, we have only our second loss overall, and unfortunately, our first loss in a liberation right. 
and just how impactful that loss will be, I can't say. So, I mean, we'll try to push forward, we'll try to be more successful with what looks like it may be the final liberation cycle. And with that, that'll be this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.